everyone i hope you all had a wonderful weekend so this video i've actually got no great adventures from the weekend to tell you although we did take the dogs out for several big walks in between the heavy rainfall that we are experiencing in definitely the southeast of the uk utterly miserable really really cold and then you're reading all these reports of like europe and obviously the doom mongers and everything you know the world's on fire a big shout out to anyone that has got friends and family across the greek islands i cannot believe that arsonists have done this people have deliberately started this fire it's got nothing to do with climate change nothing to do with global warming it has everything to do with the fact that people have willingly chosen to do this i hope that they are all found all arrested last i heard nine people had been arrested and I think it's truly shocking they should spend the rest of their life in prison as far as I'm concerned but just for any of you that have got friends and family or even you know people that have gone on holiday people that live there um honestly sending you my thoughts and well wishes so with the perfect news article to start let's talk about the Earthshot Prize Prince William on the 19th of September is going to be visiting New York he will be there as part of the Earthshot Prize Innovation Summit where we will find out the finalists for this year's main event in Singapore this November. This is the first time that Prince William has been to New York for an official visit since 2014. He was due to attend last year, but obviously, sadly, due to the Queen's death, that was cancelled. So I'm sure that there is going to be plenty of excitement surrounding this visit, which is going to last two days. And the reports say that his diary is incredibly full. So New Yorkers are about to have a positive visit from a Prince of the United Kingdom, rather than the last visit that you had that turned into an attention seeking paparazzi car chase which we all know never actually happened thankfully this time you've got the other brother coming now speaking of Earthshot, they have partnered with Hatchet Children's Group to create a non-fiction book to help teach children about the planet and how we can all work together to help repair it. David Attenborough is involved with the book, as is the prince himself. It will be released on the 12th of October this year and it's called The Earthshot Prize, a handbook for dreamers and thinkers. The book is going to encourage children to come up with their own ideas and innovations about how they can help repair the planet, save the ocean, there is obviously a lot of damage, as most of us are aware, that has happened all around the world due to human pollution. But don't worry, I'm not getting on my soapbox. But it's something positive that I think is good to educate children because they're going to be the ones left with what we leave behind. It's about promoting positivity rather than negativity. It's not moaning at people about their carbon footprints. Why generally these politicians, A-listers, celebrities and even ex-royals jet set around the world on private jets, pumping billions of more pollution into the air than what the, the people that they're moaning at do. Stay on these huge billion pound yachts that pump Lord knows how how much pollution into you know the ocean so those are the people that make me want to switch the channel and tune out to now on the 22nd of july we had another very important royal birthday and that was prince george turned 10 years old I cannot believe it has been 10 years since Catherine stood on the steps of the Lindo Wing with her husband, Prince William, echoing the days when Princes William and Harry were swaddled up with the then Prince and Princess of Wales. With every new year, we are given a new photograph, an official portrait normally taken by his mother, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and he is changing so much. So you can see where all of his baby face has gone now, and you can see what Prince George is going to look like as a teenager. And I'm going just say I think there might be a few heartbroken young ladies out there. Now lots of people say that he's a spitting image of Prince William but all I see is Michael Middleton. I think the genes have come through very very strong with Prince George for his mother's side. Princess Charlotte I see Windsor, I see the Queen, I see a very young Lady Sarah Chateau which is Princess Margaret's daughter who was the Queen's sister. So you can see where the genes are running through. And as for Prince Louis well there's times when I do think that he he definitely looks so much like his dad. Absolute twins with him. But again, I can see the Middleton genes. So there's been lots of stories coming out about Prince George as he reaches his first big milestone. In a couple of years, he will be going to secondary school and they have been talking about that he might be going to Eton. Recently, there were photographs released, which I won't do because I think that they were done underhandedly. But stories came out to the press that they had taken the young prince to meet teachers at the very exclusive, one of the most famous schools in the entire world and oldest. We have got acting alumni that went there, such as Eddie Redmayne and Tom Hiddleston.
Christian. Yes, Loki, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, following in his father's footstep, Prince William. William and Harry were the first of the royal family to attend there. Charles was so miserable at his school up in Scotland, he decided that he wanted to give his boys a better chance of having a happier school life than what he did. Now, Prince William, it certainly did him no harm, but naturally, <laughs> even Eton was not spared, pun intended, from Harry's Monathon, Winathon book spare, where he complained about how he never fitted in. He was, he was lonely at school. And it's funny how it's the exact same wording as Megan of her story of how she's reinvented her childhood. It was always a tale of woe, another side to her hard knock life and childhood that she had. And Harry, as we have seen, has changed and he has completely followed suit. Harry and Megan are not happy or grateful about anything that their very privileged childhoods afforded them. And it's something that has definitely damaged Harry's popularity in the US. No one likes a Mona and I feel that it's only going to get worse the more the stories are coming out about these two that are separating. I'm telling you, when this happens, War of the Roses is going to look like child's play. In more news stories that have come out, Meghan is reportedly staying in a hotel in LA and Harry is looking for houses to live in in South Africa. I believe it's possibly only temporary for Harry because he's going out there to film his documentary, which I'll come to shortly. But the fact that both articles, it's like, well, who's got the children? Are the children just staying in Montecito with Doria and Marcus Anderson? Who's got them? But again, these are there's so many stories coming out. A lot of it, I would say, is speculation and source and I don't know whether it's Harry and Meghan beginning to slowly wage war on each other very, very discreetly. There's just something about it where Harry's being painted out, someone that's like emotionally unstable, whereas Meghan is trying to put her career forward and it's all very me, me, her, her. And again, the children are mentioned. So it is, as I said, it's beginning to set the stage, which is going to be a pretty epic PR war if these two do in fact break up. Now, Harry is going to be going to South Africa and he is going to be, I'm presuming, Lothoso at a guess. Harry was very much in love with South Africa, Lothoso, and, you know, he's got, he said it himself, it was like having a second family. He felt completely at ease out there. He could just relax and be himself. And I really hope that he is not going to do what Harry and Meghan did with their trip when they last went, where they used the backdrop of poverty, where they used the backdrop and were around some people that are struggling to fight for their lives every day to sell their own pity party. This is something that many people really turned against both Harry and Meghan for. The fact is that Harry and Meghan, even back then before they left and waged war on the royal family, were already using other people to sell their victim narrative. And I just hope that Harry is not going to do a whole Finding Harry storyline with this documentary. But it has led to some headlines of, will Netflix accept this offering from Harry without Meghan? Because of course, Meghan isn't going. Another headline which I saw, which is interesting, is Harry emotionally strong enough to make it without Meghan? Well, I'm going to say yes. Yes, of course they're accepted because all of these deals, all of these big deals that they've had from Netflix, from Spotify, it's always been about Harry. It was never about Meghan. Meghan has only got the fame that she has because of marrying Harry. Spotify were reportedly upset that they weren't part of their big multi-million contract. They ended up with the Meghan show. Netflix, Pearl, it was in effect a cartoon about Meghan as a young girl. Meghan no doubt narrating Meghan. And again, it's, it's a narcissist dream. But these companies were not interested. And that's why Spotify also shut down their contract. Megan's book, her love sonnet to Harry, where her heart went thump thump. Well, that was a complete flop. Megan's 40 by 40, an idea that she copied from Barack Obama, again, disappeared into thin air. It's a total flop. Nobody is interested in Megan. And I bet that is an incredibly tough pill for her to swallow. And when Spotify only had archetypes and Harry had one brief starring moment, and do you know what it reminded me of? It was like her maid awkwardly walking in on her boss doing a Zoom phone call. You know, we were treated to that all over the pandemic where people were all working from home. A guy stands up and he's wearing his shorts underneath his business shirt. Harry's only moment on Spotify was him awkwardly walking in going, oops, sorry, Megan, I didn't realise that you were here 
with all of their film crews and their sound crews. Oops, I'll let you get back to it while I go feed the chickens. It was embarrassing and it was very degrading for Harry. The same as when she was promoting 40 by 40. Harry had a starring role of being the jester the Joker. Prince Harry was involved in it just to play the fool, juggling at the window for a few moments. Meghan knows all of these deals rely on Harry. They didn't pay for Meghan. Oprah didn't pay for Meghan. Netflix did not pay for Meghan. It was always and it will always be about Harry. And this is the problem. This is where I think Harry was sold a gold dusted, sparkly, Hollywood dream of of what his life was going to be like by Meghan. The thing is, it wasn't Harry's dream. It was Meghan's dream, but she knew that she needed him to be able to achieve it. No one can convince me that Harry is happy with his life out there. He looks like a broken man. He looks a shell of his former self. Can you imagine how exhausted it must be trying to make someone happy that will never be happy? Narcissists will never, ever be happy with anything that they have got. They will always want more. And Harry has given up absolutely everything to make her happy and still she's not happy from his friends to his country to his family to all of his jobs his charities his patronages even his still the connections that he had to the military he gave it all up for her and she is still not happy can you imagine no wonder he looks like he's had his soul sucked out of him she very much like amber heard is a succubus they suck the life out of their prey until they can have no more use for them and i think harry his usefulness has definitely run out. Megan sees him as being the toxic part of their relationship. He's the reason why she's not getting the deals. And no doubt she is telling Harry that is the reason why it's not all working out. It's all of the things that he's done, despite the fact she's the one that encouraged him no doubt wrote most of the speeches, told him what to put in the interviews and the books. So it is completely gaslighting Harry. But him making a break and being able to spend some time in South Africa, people are saying this could put a strain on their marriage. I think this could be the best decision that Harry's ever made. It might give him a chance to actually get her voice out of his head and maybe sit there and think things through. Think about the pain that he genuinely caused his family. He might have friends out there that Meghan can't get to that say, dude, you, you really messed up. You did some awful things. Can you not understand why your family are hurt? Maybe if Harry has some positive people around him, rather than just Meghan's friends, Meghan's team of staff, you know, they're all gonna be yes people or they get sacked. He won't have the influence of Doria and Marcus Anderson. Maybe Harry might have a chance to think for himself again. There are stories coming out that Harry is reaching out or trying to reach out to his family. I don't know how true this is. Again, this is a lot of speculation, but it wouldn't surprise me if Harry is beginning to reach out because his relationship is beginning to disintegrate. But for Harry, people and his family may not be so willing to hold out a hand and say yes, because it depends is he actually going to say, I'm sorry for the pain that I have caused you? Or is he going to just be blaming it on Megan? Or is he only trying to say that he's sorry? That's even if this is true, because he's got his tail between his legs and he feels that his options are running out. Either way, that doesn't make it out to be a real apology. So it's hardly surprising if this is true, that his family and especially Catherine and William are saying, thanks, but no thanks. I'm so sick of reading Prince William should forgive Harry. The royal family should give an olive branch to Harry. He has done nothing but sustain an attacks on his family for the last few years. And the worst thing is, like I've said in so many videos, but it does irritate me, is the fact that people say, oh, they're never going to stop bullying Harry and Meghan until they die. They never stopped bullying the Queen until she died. They never stopped bullying her until she died. And because of courtesy of Netflix, it even went on after she died. So forgive me for not feeling too sympathetic. Harry and Meghan always get called out for their behaviour and their treatment of others. They are public figures trying to sell the world a perfect image that they are holier than thou, whiter than white. They are telling people how to treat others, that we should all show respect and love and be close to our families. I mean, recently, Archwell's got the cheek to be promoting 
fatherhood when they have both cruelly attacked theirs on a public platform. What Meghan's done to Thomas Markle, I think, is, is incredibly unforgivable. To cut him off, to talk about him like he's dead, and all he's done for the last few years is to just beg for forgiveness to see his grandchildren before he dies. It's cruel. Harry has attacked his father, and he's attacked his father when the Queen had just died, when Prince Philip had just died. Harry has attacked his father and his father's wife at the times when the King has been at his most vulnerable, where he probably just wanted his son to just behave. But you think there would have been a moment of truce at that terrible time, given the fact all Harry talks about is the pain and the heartache of losing his mother. Doesn't matter how old you are, it still hurts. So as for Harry not being welcomed back by his family at the click of the fingers, Harry might find himself in limbo for some time, and deservedly so. But it's not the only thing that he's in limbo with. I think he's also in it because of the lifestyle that he, like I said, he's been sold a dream which isn't coming to fruit and that is that he was going to be mingling with celebrities. Harry's always loved mingling with celebrities and being a member of the royal family afforded him that. He, as a teenager, he got to hang out with the Spice Girls. Okay, some of you be like, cringe, no biggie. But this is when they were at worldwide peak fame. A young teenage boy got to meet the Spice Girls. His friends would have been completely jealous. Harry and William, Snoop Dogg, Kanye, they have met some of the biggest stars and celebrities and been to parties with them ever since basically they've been old enough or possibly not old enough, if you know what I mean. This was all afforded to Harry, not because of his winning personality, but because of his family. And Meghan has made him blow up that royal connection. In another headline that's come out, Hollywood royalty is avoiding Harry and Meghan to stay in William and Catherine's good graces. This is believable because lots of people are disgusted at how Harry and Meghan turned on the royal family. No one likes particularly seeing people betray their family and it's not like it was just Oprah. <laughs> it's been a continuous slew of insults and accusations, um, podcasts, magazine interviews and even more recently Harry was still mudslinging at his family and using his statements, his court statements, when he's meant to be fighting the evil media, he's still slinging mud at his family. Add this on to, Meghan and Harry leak like a burst water main. You cannot stop them. They're not dripping. This is spurting out. This is a continuous flow of private conversations that have been had with the Queen, even not escaping it. He revealed bits and bobs about conversations inside palace residences. I said this on my Air Force One video. You know, these two are a walk-in security breach. And what do celebrities and A-listers love more? They like privacy, in some cases secrecy. Harry and Meghan like their secrecy, but they've got no respect for anyone else's. Meghan calling these paparazzi stunts all of the time. A-listers, B-listers, they know how it works because they themselves or their teams organise it for them. Meghan's doing it at such a continuous speed. I mean, it's almost weekly we're getting a pap stroll now. And if it's obvious to us, well, it's obvious to Hollywood exactly what she's up to. Not only that, but you've had several big Hollywood big power players talk about the fact that they are grifters. Meghan is always after something. She always wants something. And in a cringeworthy story that came out, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, has reportedly, according to Lady Colin Campbell, Lady C, she said that he's blocked Meghan's number because she keeps stalking him. She keeps ringing him because she's desperate to be, become a candidate. Other people have spoken out and said Meghan is a serial social climber that Hollywood A-listers have been talking amongst themselves at parties saying that Meghan has been texting them all, that Meghan is going from one person to the next, begging to hang out with them, asking people for information on other people. It's, it's embarrassing, but it's also not the done thing in those circles. Patience and tact is clearly not in Meghan's vocabulary. I mean, we shouldn't be surprised at this sort of behaviour because she used her royal wedding as an A-list networking event. Some people went off of Meghan because of that, because when they interviewed George Clooney on the way to the wedding, he was like, no, I, I, don't, I don't know them. So Meghan's not invited her family, but she's invited a bunch of A-list Hollywood stars to attend the wedding. Reese Weatherspoon reportedly turned down the invite and said, no, thank you, because she didn't know them. That's what you think most normal people would do. But otherwise, Meghan 
uses people. She social climbs. And if you are of no importance, then don't expect the front gate to be opened. In Montecito, the 88-year-old neighbour came round to try and make pleasantries and to teach them about the local area. He didn't even get past the front gate and was told they were not interested, like he was some sort of street beggar. I mean, the fact I'm not sure that they live at that place, maybe that's why they had to fob him off, the same as that Archie's bike was left outside because they don't actually live there. It's all part of a ruse. But how completely rude is that? But if he was a celebrity or he or if he had been someone that was connected to a top producer or director in Hollywood, you'd have seen Megan in her slippers running down the pathway. Hi, let him in. You know, that's that's unfortunately the way that Megan seems to see people. If you are of use, she's lovely to you. That's why we do have people speak out and go, oh, she's so sweet. She's so kind. That's because she wants something from you. Once you are of no further use, then she is not so sweet and not so kind. And if she thinks that you are even beneath her, I wouldn't even expect to get a pleasant conversation out of her. As Rebel Wilson found out at the polo, who said that she was left very unimpressed. So yes, Harry is indeed stuck in between. He doesn't fit into either world. And his wife's social climbing is ironically what's damaging his so-called Hollywood dream that he might have had. They are being excluded from any sort of big event because people don't want Megan all over them. Can we hang out? Can we do something? Do you know this person's number? Have you got this? People don't want that. So Harry and Meghan are becoming social pariahs. I kind of find it as a little bit of divine karma. It's definitely a case of the grass is not always greener or gold or sparkly on the other side. So here's hoping if Harry does actually go to South Africa without his wife's influence, a few of his brain cells might be freed up and he might actually start contemplating where it all went wrong. So before I disappear and end the video, let's just quickly talk about the prize winners. The prize winners, at the time that you are watching this video, I have just sent you a response to your comment where you have guessed the right answer. I would have quoted your YouTube name and I will be saying that you are a winner. Please contact me on my email address and we will talk about how I can get your mini prizes out to you as soon as possible. So enjoy guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!